I'm trying to find a way of marrying the financial markets and what's going on there with this chaos in the political realm, and I'm bringing in David to do that. Is there a link between the sharp run-up in stocks and Biden's struggles? Of course not, and, and everyone knows that, because the, this has had nothing to do with politics for months. It's been AI, it's been the P.E. ratio, the S&P exploding. The politics is more fun right now. Market's yeah. kind of boring, um, and some of this, these stories you're covering this morning are just mystifying to me. Um, everything James Carville said is not, they're not going to do any of that. That's exactly what they should have done six months ago. That's what a primary is for. They should have had a real primary with real candidates to go debate ideas. They didn't want to do that because they didn't want the far left coming out of the woodwork again and really met making this harder, but they took a bigger risk that obviously is backfiring. What did you make of uh, Donald Trump's tone with Sean Hannity last night? It seemed to me it was measured and calm, and he's letting the other guys destroy themselves. I think you're exactly right, Stuart. It was measured and calm, which is exactly what he needs to do. Uh, I've been critical of him when he's not measured and calm. That's the tone I prefer. I'm a very old, old fashioned guy, apparently. Um, <laughs> I think that he will win the election if he maintains that, Stuart. I don't know that he can all the way through, but the whole tone, not trying to pile on President Biden right now. Let them just do what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the Fed, because uh, Jay yeah. Powell appears before t uh, Congress this morning. He could move the market. What do you think? Yeah, he, he could. I don't think that it necessarily will, because I think the market is starting to really price in that there's 50 basis points. So rate cuts coming by the end of the year, maybe September, November, maybe November, December. December, but half a point is coming out of the Fed funds. You, you're sure of that? Well, of course I'm not sure. I'm 90% sure, which is the most anyone should be in markets. You don't want to be overly arrogant about this. 90%. Sure. <laughs> we'll do for sure. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. David, you stay with there for a minute for the outlook. Yes, do you think Biden will be at the top of the ticket on November the 5th? I do not. The only question at this point is what mechanism it is exactly. by which he gets off, whether it's easy or hard. I would have guessed he wasn't going to get through this last week, and he did. But he, I, don't, I just simply do not believe he can make it all the way to November. And unfortunately for the Democrats, I think he's making it much harder. It would probably be easier at this point for them to rip the Band-Aid and start whatever their plan B is going to be. So just I just don't know the mechanism for getting him off. the. Oh, ticket. it's just him agreeing just to step down and then yeah. and pledge his delegates. So, this, so they're sitting there probably like, oh, my God, how is he going to impress us? Yep. <laughs> well, the, the second debate is months away. If I were him, I'd probably focus on some other things because he may not be remembering his preparation for the second oh, debate. Oh, that, three was months cruel. Away. that was cruel. I don't mean it that way. I'm just saying, why, why worry about the second debate three oh. months in advance? Let's uh, change the subject. Okay. You do not invest in electric vehicle makers, do you? Um, I do not invest in electric vehicle makers, but the reason is because I do not invest in companies that lose billions and billions of dollars. And the more cars they sell, the more money they lose. Is that a good business? That's a very good answer to a question. Thank yes, you. To you. Well, that's a good. <laughs> uh, let me move on to Broadcom. Yep. Uh, they raised $5 billion. I believe it was a bond sale. Why did they need $5 billion? You've got that look on your face. I have to say it. If you want AI, you want the company making chips for AI, but they actually pay a big dividend and grow it over and over and over again. We bought Broadcom at $300 less than five Whoa. years ago. Our dividend on Broadcom right now is 25% per year of what we paid for the stock. Right. That's the kind of way you want to play AI. It's not speculative. It's cash flow. You think the stock has got to a high here? It, it's, it's, it's very high. It's a, a high multiple, but nowhere near NVIDIA. Nowhere near NVIDIA. Next case, City. They say it's time to take profits in AI. Uh, Laura. Yeah. Demand is not cooling at all. I, if you want my opinion, I would say the AI rally is bubbly. I wouldn't call it a bubble. What's the difference between bubbly and a bubble? Well, the diff because it's, <laughs> that's a very good question. It feels very inflated. You might want to be careful where you put your money. Uh, you're, good Lauren, answer. Lauren is, not Lauren, Lauren's very, is very moderate about the taking, which is probably more prudent. I'll just say it's a bubble, but that you can't time when the bubble burst, and the, this bubble's going to burst. But there will be some survivors well, when the bubble bursts. Well, if you mean survivors the that the companies stay in business and keep making a lot of money, yes. yes. My, yes. But people losing 30 40 50 percent, when they don't think it can go down, they think it only goes higher, and that things that go up only go up further.
further, they end up having to sell out at that loss because they can't take what happened. This is the story of history. It's happened over and over again. We're watching it play out right now. That, just to broaden it quickly out of AI, uh, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson is saying there's going to be a 10 percent correction in the stock market between right now and the election, between now and November. Okay. And Mike Wilson has called 20 of the last two 10 percent corrections. OK, <laughs> that was He's nasty. That was nasty. Uh, you've got your dividend pick, and that is, again, you're returning to Midstream Energy. It's an ETF, by the way. Yes, I, can, I have to stay on this theme because where else can you get over a 5% dividend yield that's growing 10% per year? The uh, stock itself is up about uh, 17% this year, and the fundamentals are all better than they've been any point over the last 10 years. They're growing cash flow like crazy. I personally think there's a very good chance President Trump wins, and, and he will be approving a lot of new projects in midstream. And so there's just a lot of fundamental and financial benefits. I don't want people to ignore this sector, UMI is a wonderful pick. So it could be a Trump um, proxy stock. In, in certain ways. And also, don't forget, Biden stopped all this export of LNG. Oh. A lot of these companies make the terminals that export liquefied natural gas. But that they, could be a huge growth sector for They've lifted that stoppage on L, L, LNG, haven't they? They've lifted it. Well, but, they, but we don't have any new terminals right now getting approved. That's what we need is more terminals getting built. How does the housing market turn around? I think it's supply, supply, supply. This thing the Biden administration wants to do about giving a tax credit to people for their down payment, that increases demand. But we have a supply shortage. That's the pricing problem. You need new homes built. And very candidly, there's almost nothing the federal government can do. It's state and local. It's environmental regulation. It's zoning. It's the cost of getting houses built. And there's another issue, too. The people in the communities need to stop this idea that they have a right to uh, all the neighborhood being master planned the way they want. Let someone who owns a big house put four units on it, get more units out of it, increase rental income. We're micromanaging the way we produce new uh, housing product in our country. It's not good. All right. David Barnson, thanks so much for being with us for the hour. Much yes. appreciated. Thank you, sir.